Hey guys, welcome to a special video. As you can see, I'm not sitting at home as usual. Um, I'm here at ASUS and uh, I have the chance to test the new ASUS Apex motherboard. Uh, this is the new overclocking high-end mainboard for Z270. Well, of course, for Intel Kaby Lake. So today we will take a closer look at this uh, nice piece of technique and also um, we will do a short overclocking guide how to overclock this i7-7700K to 5 gigahertz, which should also work for you guys. So if you want to follow this overclocking guide uh, with your CP at home, you should be able to follow the steps. Of course, at this point, it's hard to predict if all the settings will work for all the retail chips out there. But I think it should work from my experience. Um, I tested a few chips and they all could run it. Uh, maybe you can only run 4,900 uh, 4, megahertz. Still should be fine. So first of all, we will take a closer look at this main board. This is the Apex board. Um, looks quite special. I think you will notice straight that it has a special PCB shape. Uh, of course, this PCB shape uh, has mostly a design background, but I think it's very nice uh, to have. Also, it shows that there are still some kind of improvements you can do. Um, it shows that there are still innovations going on in the mainboard industry, which I really like. Um, it's something special I have never seen before. So this, the shape, even if it's a very simple step, uh, you might think, well, that's something uh, you could uh, have thought of years ago, but yeah, nobody did. So this is something new we have seen this generation. I really like this feature. Um, um, uh, here you have four PCI Express slots, and of course it's Kaby Lake, which is similar to Skylake, so you don't have a huge amount of PCI Express lanes, which means that this board should mainly be used with either one or maximum uh, two GPUs. And uh, of course, you can still use the last um, PCI Express slots for maybe a sound card or maybe a PCI Express SSD. But maybe you don't need a PCI Express SSD and why, I will tell you in a bit. So here you can see uh, the VRM cooler and underneath is sitting a very strong VRM, which is very similar to Maximus 8 Extreme, also the Maximus 9 Extreme. I could actually think that they are similar. Um, from the looks, they look similar. Also. Um, uh, I can assure you that the VRM quality is extremely good. So um, downstairs we were testing um, Kaby Lake uh, on liquid nitrogen. And actually when we test those boards and the CPUs and liquid nitrogen, we never use a heatsink for the VRM and also no heatsink for the PCH. And you can imagine if we push those CPUs to around 7 gigahertz, you can imagine that the power consumption is much higher than what you use in a daily system. And even then, we don't need a heatsink, which shows how efficient they are and how strong they are. So yeah, the heatsink um, looks nice. Um, if you plan to use water cooling, you don't have to upgrade uh, to a full cover block. You can just use this. It's perfectly fine. So, of course, you have all the other uh, RGB uh, features on here. You have on all the other um, ROG boards. Also, um, there is this little piece, which I forgot in a German video. Um, so this is a small piece of acrylic, which you can put down here between uh, the PCI Express slot, or you can even replace the top part. And those pieces are meant for personalization. So you can either get them, for example, laser engraved, or you put your own logo on it or something similar, which could be interested for, uh, interesting for some SIs which use this board. So um, yeah, personalize your, personalize your mainboard with that. That's possible. But let's take a closer look at the overclocking and technical features, which I'm sure interest you more. So. Of course, I'm sure you saw that this board has three DIMMs, three, uh, three DDR4 slots. So why three? Um, we have two here, which are the real DDR4 slots, and the third one is a special feature. So two slots um, and not four. Why only two? Because you can move the slots closer to each other and also closer to the CPU, which will essentially improve the signal quality and then also give you more headroom in the overclocking. This also leads me to um, the DDR4 sticks, which I have here. Those are some very special sticks. Those are some uh, DDR4 sticks, which I got from G-Skill. Those are rated at 4,266 megahertz. And yeah, that is amazingly high. I, well, it's the first time for me as well today that I touched such a, a high rated module. And uh, before I always were kind of conservative when it comes about uh, high memory frequencies for daily usage, because mainly 
if you get a 3600 or a 3866 megahertz kit, you usually have trouble to get it to work. So even on some main boards, you have trouble to get 3000 megahertz to work. So why would you get 4266, right? Um, on this board, it's amazing. I have no idea how they did it, but it works. So when I plugged them in and I loaded the XMP profile, well, I had to do two slight adjustments, which I will show you later in the BIOS, but then it worked. It was extremely easy. And uh, yeah, so I have no words for this. Uh, when you want to clock your memory really high, this should be uh, your choice. That's also the reason why they have only two memory slots instead of four. And well, there are high density modules, so actually four module, uh, two modules are fine. You can even get uh, 32 gigabyte, which is uh, fine for normal uh, for nowadays uh, computing and gaming. So let's go over to the third slot, which is an amazing feature, and I was really surprised when I got, when I got the first sample. I was like, "What is this? Why is there well, well why, why are there three slots, and why is the third uh, slot blocked? Because you can see there is a small metal shield on here." which uh, is to prevent that somebody puts a DDR4 slot in there, because actually this slot is hooked up to PCI Express lanes. And the PCI Express lanes are connected to the PCH, and therefore you have a special adapter card. That's the one which I removed at the beginning of this video. Uh, it's this. It looks like a small memory, sl uh, memory uh, module. And actually it's a small PCB, which has uh, two M.2 slots on there. And you can see I mounted uh, two M.2 drives, NVMe drives, and uh, yeah, so this is basically an NVMe RAID card, which is absolutely amazing. And this card can be hooked up into the slot, which is then connected uh, to the PCH. And um, well, you can get the maximum uh, performance out of NVMe drives with that solution because you don't steal any PCI Express lanes from your GPU, which is really nice. So essentially, you use two M.2 drives and you can still get 16 uh, PCI Express lanes for your graphics card which is really nice. So imagine using two M.2 drives from Samsung 960 uh, Pro with two terabyte here in RAID 0. Well, performance will be amazing. I didn't test it yet. I will test it afterwards, after this video, and cut it inside. Um, my personal guess would be something between 3,000 and 5,000 uh, megabyte per second uh, read, which would be absolutely stunning. Usually, you have to invest, I don't know, three, four, five thousand euros in a PCI Express drive to get this performance. Well, we will see if we can achieve that performance. Um, so far, I tested um, this drive with two HyperX uh, SSDs, um, I think HyperX Predator. And even with those, you get a really high performance, which we will take a look at after. But um, yeah, first of all, we will take some, uh, well, a closer look at some shots of this mainboard. And afterwards, I will show you uh, in the BIOS how, ex how exactly you can clock uh, this i7 7700K to 5 gigahertz. You can follow this guide, of course, if you have this mainboard, if you have this CPU, um, if you have sufficient cooling solution, you can follow this guide. And usually, you should be able to clock your uh, CPU to 5 gigahertz with that. <laughs> All right, so before we go into the BIOS, I want to explain this region quickly because it's very important for this board. Of course, here you have those uh, measurement points to read out all the voltages of your system. Here you have two jumpers which are um, responsible for uh, channel A and channel B. So you can individually switch off uh, your memory slots, which is very helpful for extreme overclocking. Those four uh, dip switches are for the PCI Express slots, so you can turn on and turn off the PCI Express devices. Those switches are only for uh, extreme overclocking, so not really necessary. The first one is, for example, that you can even, the left one, uh, that you can boot at uh, minus 180 degrees, which is very nice for us, but for a normal user, probably not that helpful. But for us, extreme overclockers, it's a very amazing feature. So of course, here you have the debug LED, uh, start and reset. And those are two buttons which are also very helpful for normal users. And that's why I want you that you know about what it is. 
So the left one, the red one, is uh, safe boot. So if you press this one, um, it means that the uh, system will load the optimized defaults and goes into BIOS and you can set everything again. Uh, that's sometimes very useful if you just want to try some, for example, memory settings and it doesn't work as planned. And you just press this button, it goes back to BIOS and you can set again. The white one, the one on the right, is the retry button. So if you uh, just uh, tried a setting and it didn't boot, you can try a second time uh, just by pressing this button. It's the same as if you would go back to the BIOS and reapply the setting. It just saves you some time. Sometimes it might help you to pass uh, some settings, for example, for memory overclocking. All right. So